Welcome to Crazy Russian Mama YouTube channel. Uh, he is Oksana from Alabama, real Travis Kerler Williams. And I wanted to introduce you, uh, my friend, Dale. Uh, Dale is a mortgage originator. Many of you told me to start my channel because you love my accent. <laughs> so you can listen to me all you want. And here Dale with your southern accent will tell you how to buy a house in Alabama. So, uh, Dale, please introduce yourself with your southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Albrechtson with Onboard Mortgage. I'm a mortgage loan originator. Uh, I've been originating for about 17 years. I am originally from Mobile, Alabama. Um, I have worked um, for several different companies, not too many though. Um, I do have a lot of experience working with people doing mortgage loans. Uh, Oksana wants me to talk to you today about purchasing a house, what's involved in that. Um, interest rates are really great right now. So it is the time to purchase a house at this time. Um, and I forgot to tell you, today is December 17, 2019. That's correct. So in December 17, what kind of rates we have? Right now, uh, depending on your credit score, we're seeing the threes for uh, some of our programs and all the way up to four, four and a quarter, somewhere around that range. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have a low credit score, you might be in the fours, but the higher your credit score is, you could possibly get a good rate in the threes. Let me ask you something. When me and my husband wanted to buy a house three years ago, we went to our bank, Hancock, and we uh, were told that we need to pay them for credit check. We had to pay them like 40 or 50 dollars for credit check. Mm -hmm. And I know that Envoy Mortgage works differently. Please That's tell us about it. Okay, I don't buy a mortgage. We take an application and run your credit, but we do not charge you for a credit report fee up front. No charge up front. That's right. If you close the loan, there is a $17 credit report fee, but I do not collect any money from you to do that application. I can do uh, check your credit, check your uh, debt ratio, and and do a scenario for you right away. If uh, you're approved, you will get a letter with the amount you're approved for based on your income and your credit. And um, that way we know what you can afford as far as a house goes. We talk about uh, loan programs, what, you know, depending on how much money you've got to put down on a house. If you don't have any money, you might want to do the USDA loan program where there's a 0% down payment. Did you hear that? 0% down payment is possible if you have USD loan. How much money a family should make a month to be qualified for USDA program? Okay, if it's a family from one to four, you're looking at about 82700 a year, uh, depending All on... All this? Yes. If you, uh, are, if you have more than four people in your family, it goes up. We have to check the eligibility criteria to see what you'd be, but it would be over 100000 mm -hmm. uh, about 105000 110000 somewhere around in there, uh, for more than four people. And family. But you have to understand that being qualified for USDA loan doesn't mean that you can get any house you want. That's right. Please tell us about USDA uh, requirement location stuff. Yeah, USDA is only for certain areas. It's in the county. It's not for the city limits of Mobile County. So you have to buy and purchase a house that's located in certain areas in Mobile, uh, in the West Mobile area, or um, like Sims, Wilmer, uh, Grand Bay, Theodore, Arrington, uh, way out West Mobile past the airport. There's a lot of areas that qualify. Also in Ballin County too, there's a lot of areas over there that qualifies mm -hmm. for USDA. The seller can pay up to 6% of your closing cost. 
uh, with your earnest money being applied as uh, a credit, uh, we use the earnest money to apply as a credit towards your closing cost. And then the seller paying your closing cost, they may not need to pay 6%, but if they could cover all of that, a lot of times borrowers do not bring any funds to closing. Uh, and it I have really a question. works out good. And now a question. Uh, so how much are closing costs altogether? It can vary um, depending on, um, it's, well, you got your um, origination cost, which is the underwriting fee. If you want to pay points on your rate, that means uh, you get a better interest rate. If the seller is paying your closing costs, I would buy as playing at least 1% or under for origination points. That way you can get a better interest rate. And since the seller is offering it to you, why not take advantage of it? So if you can say that seller will pay for you to buy the house. That's right. Sometimes. Is it, uh, tell me, how often does that happen, by the way, from your experience? Uh, how, how often seller pays closing cost or partial? Just about every single loan I do, the seller is paying closing cost. Did you hear that? Not very often. I've Here seen in Alabama, it. we're talking yeah, about Alabama. There's maybe in a certain situation, like a seller is really anxious to get rid of a house and they're upside down on it. They really can't afford to, you know, they're just trying to get out from underneath it because they need to leave town. Mm -hmm. They haven't had the house very long then a lot of times they will not pay closing costs because they're trying to get out, out from underneath the house. That depends if the buyer's willing to do it. If the buyer's got the money, then they'll say, okay, well, we'll take this good, you know, price for the house because we're getting lower, you know, we're not paying any closing costs. They're still getting a deal and they have the money in the bank, especially if they're doing USDA, all they'll be paying. But you're looking at sometimes on a $100,000 house, you're probably looking at between four and five thousand dollars for closing costs and prepaids. The prepaids is for your escrow account that we set up, like uh, taxes and insurance. You pay that in your loan. We have to go ahead and pay the insurance for one whole year, so that's prepaid. And then you have your taxes and insurance escrow account that we set up um, for the buyer to buy a house so that they can go ahead and be caught up on everything when their loan goes in. And that way the, the buyer does not ever have to pay their insurance and taxes. It's automatically paid by the servicer of their loan. All right, thank you. Also, I have a question, and let's make it clear for people who want to buy a house who never bought a house before. What are the main requirements uh, as now, December 2019? Is it still two years of tax records? Of, That's know? right. We use um, two years W-2s and two years tax returns. Uh, we have to have your uh, bank accounts, uh, two months bank statements. Two months bank statements. Pay attention. Pay attention. Yep. Two months bank statements, all pages, and uh, a copy of your state ID, you know, your driver's license and social security card copy, and um, pay stubs. We need your pay stubs for one whole month, and that'll do it. I mean, that's pretty much mm -hmm. all we need to get you started. Now, sometimes we might run into things that we might ask for, like, uh, say for instance, she was making a withdrawal out of your retirement, your 401k account. You can withdraw out of that account and to buy a house. That is a very good reason. You can pay it back with your paychecks, like you're paying it every pay period. They can take a little extra and pay it back, put the money back for you. Your employer can. Uh, we would need a copy of your retirement statement, where you withdrew the funds, and an updated statement showing where the funds was withdrawn. Um, also, that same thing goes for gift funds. Mm -hmm. If you want to have gifts given to you for money, Say the mother or the father or grandparents wanted to give you money to buy a house. Oh, everybody wants that rich relative <laughs> who wants to give them money. <laughs> <laughs> and like a, like a wedding present or something. Yes. And they'll say, okay, well, I'll give you a couple thousand dollars, you know. So if they do that, you will have to have a gift letter, which we supply. Proof. Provide the proof. And we have to have a paper trail. That means we have to show where the grandparents or whoever, they have to be a relative, 
is funding you the money and get a copy of their bank statement where they withdrew the funds, a copy of the check, and copy where the uh, customer has deposited into their account. So you cannot go to your friend realtor and say, <laughs> that happened to me, that happened to me. Aksan, after you sell this house and make money, I'll borrow it from you <laughs> so I can buy my house. That's crazy. <laughs> I've never heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, now let's talk quickly about uh, how much money a person who gonna be qualified for USD loan will need. I usually say that you need a thousand dollars earnest check. Yes, and an appraisal fee. And you need appraisal fee usually is what? 500? Uh, we go ahead and collect 500 up front, but if for some reason the appraiser charges less, they could charge 400 or 350. It depends on the type. It could be a conventional appraisal is a little cheaper and we'll get into that more. It's just not as extensive as your government loans. A government loan, uh, a house has to pretty much be perfect. It don't have to be painted perfect and, excuse me, it doesn't have to be painted perfect or anything like that, but it does need to have uh, no interior damage, uh, in exterior damage like holes in the walls mm -hmm. or rotten in wood or anything like that. So the government's a little particular. So uh, their loans, their appraisals cost a little bit more uh, because it's more extensive. A conventional appraisal is not. And you have to make sure you don't forget that a buyer gets an inspector. That's right. So buyer has to get inspection, and if it and it usually from two hundred fifty dollars. Um, I think they're about up. two fifty or up. It depends uh, on the size of the house. I don't get into that because we do not require a copy of the inspection. Right. Um, that is strictly so the buyer of the house feels confident about buying a house that because it's been inspected. They inspect everything from. Uh, the roofing, they climb on the roof and check it out. They check the plumbing, the electrical, they check everything in the house. Yes, I know Plumbing. several inspectors and I work with several inspectors. Um, uh, so, and they have several different tools mm -hmm. which will uh, find water leaks, uh, gas in the air, you know, they flush they every check. toilet, they flush every toilet, they open water, start water in every faucet. Yes. To make sure it's flowing correctly, they have to open every window. Mm -hmm. They have to make sure, you know, and they have to write and make pictures of every problem they find. There's no broken windows. If there is, those required to be fixed. Yeah, they check even for mold and mildew in yes. the home to make sure that, like, a wall that's been leaking doesn't have mold or mildew in it. Um, they check all that out. They do a good job. Yeah. So, um, so now you know. You earn us money check, a thousand dollars. Yeah, when you make you know, five hundred. Yes, yes uh, when you making an offer, mm -hmm, appraisal, appraisal, and uh, inspector, mm -hmm. right? Pretty much. So you're looking at fifteen hundred or less to get into a house on the USDA loan. Okay. And it's a good idea though to have at least one or two house payments in your bank account. What I usually do if the, say the statement cutoff date is say a little bit low, mm -hmm. like five or $600 is in the bank, I get them to go to the bank and get like a printout, like a cutoff statement, you know, mm -hmm. just like a printout from the bank, or they can do it online theirself and continuation pages to go with the original bank statement like the day they get paid so it'll show a little bit higher balance it's always good to have at least one house payment if not two in the bank because that helps um what we call compensating factors it just looks better to an underwriter to show that you have funds, funds. in the bank for a house note mm -hmm. it just helps mm -hmm. well if you have any more questions you can uh Contact me, Oksana Leslie with Karen Williams, or you contact Dale. How do you say your name? Albertson. Albert, Albertson. That's right. Like Albertson Food Store? No, uh, my last name is Norwegian. I have inherited it. Oh, all right, cool. So you can contact Dale from Envoy Mortgage. Mortgage.
mortgage. Mortgage. That's right. Why all this is mortgage? I don't know. Mortgage. <laughs> so, and all this information is in the pinned comment to the video, um, and uh, it's going to be running inside of the video. So, okay. uh, hopefully, you make your decision, and uh, all your dreams uh, in buying real estate come true. Goodbye, it was Crazy Thank Russian you. Mama and Dale. Merry Christmas. Ah, okay. Так, окей, okay, записывается Соя. Um, в общем, так, я надеюсь, вам понравилось это интервью с человеком, который пишет ипотеки. И uh, вот, в общем, такие требования для того, чтобы uh, купить дом в Америке. Well, you know what? Also, offer uh, down payment assistance. Um, Dale, what about uh, down payment assistance? Uh, yes, we offer that. You can borrow three percent of your down payment on an FHA or conventional loan. Mm -hmm. uh, we have those loans through Alabama Housing. Um, say, for instance, FHA's requirement is three and a half percent down. Well, you borrow three percent, so you have two notes. You have a three percent payment amortized for ten years, and then you have the ninety-six and a half percent loan amortized for uh, thirty years. So the two loans together, you can add them together and pay them every month, and you can pay either one of them off uh, as quickly as possible with no prepayment penalties. And if you always, if you want to just knock out that 10 year uh, payment, because it's going to be pretty low, uh, I would advise it. Like if you get your income tax back, try to pay it off and that'll take and drop your house note down every month. And that'll be, you know, even better. There is a fee, a half a percent fee that Alabama Housing charges to process your loan. We uh, underwrite it with Envoy and then we submit it to Alabama Housing. And when we do, we have to send in your cashier's check or money order for half a percent of the loan amount and um, for their processing fee. Um, once that's approved, then we get an underwriter declared to close it and you can close on your loan. Uh, the um, conventional FHA, I mean, conventional mortgage loan is offering an incentive program uh, to finance with them. The rates are a little bit higher, but about a quarter of a point is all. The private mortgage insurance is a little bit higher, but it's 100% financing because you do a 97% loan and a 3% loan, which makes it 100%, and they offer uh, a $2,500 incentive to do the loan, and you can apply it towards your closing cost, your down payment, or just get a check at closing. Do people do it often? The conventional loan, not very often. Uh, they stick mostly with the FHA because the private mortgage insurance is a standard rate of a 0.85%. And on a conventional one, it's gonna be based on their um, income and their credit score and the price of the house. And usually when you buy a house over 100,000, you got a high credit score, then you're gonna get the best PMI rate there is, and it's usually over 1%. So uh, it varies from 1% to one, one and a quarter to 1.75% PMI. So it just depends. Some you know, people don't know what PMI is, please It's explain. private mortgage insurance. It protects the lender. It does not protect you. And do not get this confused with homeowner's insurance. It's not the same thing. Uh, private mortgage insurance is only for the lender's protection. If you foreclose on your house, then it helps them to be able to pay the mortgage back with this money as they collect. So, uh, I mean, it may not cover all of it, but at least they get a percentage of the money back for uh, your default on the mortgage. Thank you.